And now, it's that time of the week once again. Welcome to the Departure Lounge Podcast with your hosts, Tom Whittle and Steve Waldridge. Your ticket to the home of aviation podcasts. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to episode number 68 uh, of the Departure Lounge podcast here on the Departure Lounge YouTube channel. And of course, wherever you're watching tonight, whether it's Visions Aviation's Facebook or YouTube or our Facebook and YouTube, hello and welcome to you all. Hope you're all very well <clears throat> on this, uh, well, at least here, uh, lovely sunny uh, Sunday evening. Uh, we'll get straight into it by introducing um, the guys that are here. So joining me as always, and I'm not liking the fact he's got yellow latency, but we'll see how that goes. It's Steve Waldridge. Steve, a good evening to you uh, from Pixel Land. How are you? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Then, boys and girls, assuming you can hear lagging too hard, how are we all doing uh, this week? Hope yeah, very well. Um, as noted or as seen, I uh, had to change the intro um, for the show because uh, Facebook decided it was going to be an absolute ass uh, and decide that uh, it was going to copyright strike me and then not tell me why. Uh, so I figured rather than doing that, I'd change the intro. So there you go. Other than that, all good. <clears throat> all good. Decent weekend. Um, but, so, far. so yeah. This time we lost Antarctic all a bit of a blow, wasn't it? <laughs> We did indeed. Our, uh, our Antarctica audience out there and North Koreans that were watching, we're sorry that we've lost you, uh, thanks to copyright. Um, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Um, how's your weekend been so far, Steve? Yeah, no, I've been pootling around. Really. Too much. They can start to get and next week out and about all over. In terrible standing. I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> well, Lovely. The last kind of thing before that. Awesome. Wonderful stuff. Uh, we'll keep you there, Steve. Um, but also joining us, as always, from the north, it's Ian Hartley. Ian, a very good evening to you. How are you? Uh, very well, thanks, Tom. How are you? And good evening to you as well, Steve. Hello, mate. Yeah, very well. Not too bad. Right. Good. Yeah, good. Thank you. Not too bad. How's your weekend been so far? Um, quiet, really. I've... Um... I've started, if we're doing the model review after, I'll show you, but I've started building um, a tornado um, in the Gulf War um, livery, which is my favourite tornado of all time. So I might show you the seats later if I get a chance. And that's pretty much what I've been doing this weekend, just uh, pottering around with that, to be quite honest. Wonderful, wonderful. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, right, let's get on to uh, the reason why we're here this evening. Uh, let's bring on our guest for tonight. He was here doing uh, the... Rating liveries uh, show and cause some controversy. However, he's here to cause some more. Uh, it is, of course, uh, Sam Taylor Ackroyd. Hopefully, he's not freezing this time. Uh, Sam, good evening to you. How are you? Good evening, all. I am very well, thank you. And um, there will only be more controversy if anyone brings up the 757 or A340. But other than that, I plan on having a good podcast with. Three amazing. I saw that. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've made your point. No, that's fine. But, we'll be yeah, on. I'm we'll really be on good behavior. Be on what I think is the be best podcast, or at least the best aviation podcast, in my opinion. Did you Very say A three forty or A three forty? Or did you say seven five seven? No, I'd, I'd tell you what he said. Oh, it's an A340, did he? <laughs> That's the one. 
Yeah. Wow. Anywho. <laughs> Anywho. Um, right, let's get into tonight's show. Lots to cover before we jump into tonight's show, uh, but we'll do a little bit of housekeeping first. Uh, firstly, uh, stick around for by the end of the show uh, because we have a humongous announcement in regards to who we've got on next week. Arguably our biggest guest yet. Uh, so if you are intrigued to find out who that is, stick around. We've got a little graphic to show for that. We also have a brand new segment that we are uh, debuting tonight. Um, so you can stick around with that. And we, of course, will be asking for your input as well. Yes, you, your input uh, as well. So do stick around if you want to get involved. Um, you can follow us on social medias, as that's, of course, where we are. Um, they're all in the description below. Um and uh, yeah, give us a follow if you want to keep up to date with everything happening in the show. Lots going on, which we'll talk about later. Um, you can also buy our merch in the shop, uh, which is also in the description below. I've just realized it's no good, is it? If the graphic ain't there, there you go. Uh, all just uh, amateur stuff, I know. Uh, visit the shop. Um, links in the description below. I wonder where it was. Um, also, uh, if you want to be a guest on the show, just like Sam, uh, do give us a message on social medias. Um, you can also give us a, a follow in the Facebook group of the Departure Lounge community channel, which I'm sure our wonderful mod Gail will put into the chat at some point this evening evening uh so yes lots to get through so uh <laughs> lots of comments in there already can already see what we're doing um but ian if you'd like to uh, say hello to the wonderful people that are in the chat yeah i'll uh i'll right, just start from bottom and work my way up then i think um so samuel taylor Ackroyd excited to be on the show tonight is that right sam <laughs> yes very <laughs> first, first comment at night well done excellent pal. good job um yeah good evening to to you gail uh, doing a sterling job um, with the um, moderating tonight, and um, the pictures I put behind me are, are inspired actually by Sam's love of all three uh, forties <laughs> and and seven four sevens and, and whatnot. So, uh, good evening, to, good evening to Max Jet Live TV and Jack Rolls. Um, see who else we've got. Mark Webb or Webster. Good evening to you, um, Catherine Saint Norman. I think there's a play on words there. I hope there is anyway. <laughs> So it's Catherine Sane Norman. So good evening to you. Clive Everly, um, Welshy Kev. Uh, Visions International, he's on as well. He's um, saying good evening to, I think he said, Tom and the mods. So that's not me and you, Steve, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to Jim Gemmell as well. Oh, Luke, yeah. see you. Someone's um, Jules, Sarah Pass, Link Cable, Martin Woodridge. Uh, Loopy again, Clive. Does Catherine say no? Well, I think I've just about gone through everybody who's who's there. And a massive shout out to uh, oh yeah, there's Tom Hardy as well. And I'll say good evening to you, as you Tom, do. And, as you do. Um, nice one, Link, Tom Hardy. Did I see Link Cable? Is it somewhere? Visions International again, girl. I'm it live, Jim Gemmell. It seems to be. It's moving as I'm trying to. Yeah, there it is. That's what I'm up to. Link yeah. cables. Well, good evening to you. And the list goes on and the list goes on. And a big shout out to Tian, who sat opposite me and we're having a rhyme for a mention. So yeah, give us a shout. Come on, there's Rob Brown as well. So good <laughs> evening to you, obviously, Rob. Uh, Ryan Garland as well. Good evening to you. And a little Ryan Garland as well. Michael Painter as well. Good evening to you. Um, and even um, Restream.io's put a little message in for you, Tom. So good evening to Restream as well. Oh, I didn't know they were watching. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> you, can. Can. you put that in there then. Yeah, I think anyway. I've got everyone there. Never mind. Right. Love your job. Who right. Mentioned? Let's uh, go into uh, this evening's show. Of course, do keep getting your comments in. And if you've got any questions for Jack, uh, Jack, not Jack. Do you know why? It's because I was messaging him before. Uh, for Sam, sorry, my bad. Um, controversial, I know. However, uh, if you've got any questions for Sam, do get them into the chat and we'll ask him uh, as the show goes on. I can imagine what the topics are going to be for the questions, so we'll go for that. Um, so, yeah, let's go into it. Sam, if you would like to give a small introduction to yourself um, uh, for those that may not sort of know who you are. Right, well, um, good evening to all of you who are watching and listening to this podcast. Uh, as you can probably guess, my name is Samuel Taylor Ackroyd, and I'm an aviation enthusiast based at Edinburgh Airport in Scotland, but I do visit other UK airports like uh, Glasgow Prestwick, Manchester Heathrow, which I will actually be at a week today, and... Um, hopefully more airports in the coming future. 
as well as at international airports, which are included. And uh, yeah, and I am a regular on the podcast as well. I've been on like, what, five times or something like that? I don't know. But I've already had one personal interview on this podcast before, but I hope to sort of improve it because I feel like I was a bit unprepared, as I tend to be. Wicked. Awesome stuff. Uh, now, you gave us <clears throat> a small list of uh, things to um, discuss, uh, so we'll go straight into um, that sort of side of things. Uh, you've recently been, um, we'll start off with sort of the main thing anyway, uh, you've recently been to the 747 uh, Hotel, which I believe is over in, I want to say, Sweden, is it? Uh, yes, it's in Sweden at Stockholm Arlanda Airport, and it's called yeah. the Jumbo Stay. Do you want to sort of just tell us a little about what that was like? It's pretty much as you would expect, especially for such a big 747 fan. And as it's my favourite aircraft type, obviously you have to go if you get the chance. And um, considering that Norwegian Air have some cheap flights from certain parts of the UK, such as Edinburgh, and I think at one point they had some from Manchester as well. If you can travel to Stockholm, Arlanda Airport to stay at the Jumbo Stay, then definitely do so. I mean, I stayed there for three nights and I loved the trip so much. I mean, despite one little issue that I had that I'm not going to um, start talking about because, um, yeah, it's a bit of a pain to just think about, really. But thankfully, it's all over with. But the trip there and back with Norwegian Air was good, but... The main focus being um, the uh, the stay at the Jumbo Stay. And yeah, it was absolutely incredible. And uh, if you watch my 42-minute uh, something second video on the place, you'll see just how amazing it is. But of course, it is difficult to appreciate something off of a YouTube video. I mean, you actually have to be there to actually have the full experience. And yeah, but something that stands out from my stay and my youtube video on the place is that um yeah, as you can see from uh, the photo on the screen now um the uh, manager there actually knew i was making a video because uh, my dad who i was with on the trip ended up speaking to him and we all ended up <clears throat> having a conversation and he was very enthusiastic about my love for the 747 and the fact that i was making a youtube video on the place and he gave me um, a key to a few of the rooms, such as uh, one of the uh, engine rooms. This is uh, engine three, and I think it's room 717, if I remember correctly. But he also let me have access to the other suites so I can film them for my video and show you all what they look like. And yeah, it was one of the best trips of my life and it's it is something that i'm never truly going to forget and i'm really glad that i got this trip done because i was looking forward to it for months and months probably like since october 2021 or something like that so yeah i'm just glad that i have um the uh, documentary type vlog on my channel to share the experience and share what a good time i had yeah, amazing. i assume these were probably quite cramped i imagine uh, sorry, what was that? <clears throat> were they quite cramped in terms of room, in terms of like sort of room to move, or were they sort of quite spacious? Uh, to be honest, um, they were at, they were all right. I mean, uh, in the um, the bathroom inside the cockpit suite, uh, if you're around six foot tall like me, then um, you will have to bend down near where the doorway is because um, if I remember correctly, I think I actually hit my head uh, at least once, but. Uh, and in the cockpit suite, I mean, you only have a bit of room to move about, but it was still very good. And I mean, if you're claustrophobic, definitely don't stay in the engine rooms, especially um, uh, the bedding area. But of course, I mean, you're always going to sleep on a bed in a, a hotel room. So I don't know what I'm saying there. But I mean, yeah, if you're claustrophobic, it's best not to stay in the engine rooms. How, how many rooms are actually in the plane itself, Sam? 33. Right. And, and are the upper deck rooms sort of better suites than what the lower deck rooms are? Uh, definitely, as uh, the cockpit suites up there, definitely. And not only that, but um, since you get um, 
access to the private lounge, then um, yeah, you have more than just the cockpit suite to yourself. You have the whole upper deck to yourself, only the okay. cockpit suite guests and well, I imagine the staff as well. Yeah. What about like, I mean, yeah, a lot of these... huge... <clears throat> sorry, Steve. I was going to say, it must be hugely busy. Like how, how far in advance do you have to book it? And like, was it totally full? Um, I don't think it was full, but I mean, I did see a few people and um, if anything, I saw more people come in and go in just to have a look at the aircraft and, but I mean, but, yeah, there were a few guests and um, we did end up speaking to a few of them. Well, at least I did um, with a, another guest who was staying like one night and I think traveling either by train to go to Sweden or travel on an aircraft from Orlando airport. I can't fully remember, but I ended up speaking to them and I told them about how I was up in the cockpit suite and they were, well, at least the dad was amazed. And um, the people who, well, knew that we were staying in the cockpit suite definitely considered us lucky. Mm. What, what about, did, did, did all the rooms come with like, on, on suite facilities, like bathrooms and things like that, or are these shared? Uh... Um, well, you definitely get um, your own private bathroom in the suites, like the cockpit suite, the black mm. box suite, the single room suite. But um, in the back of the aircraft, there's like three bathrooms that the guests of the standard rooms and the dormitory rooms have to share. There's also um, accessible... Uh, bathrooms as well so they're big enough to get uh, people in wheelchairs in there so Jumbo Snake de definitely comes prepared for um, mm. well lots of things that not exactly everyone would have thought about yeah yeah um, and if, if you don't mind me asking is it an expensive place to stay um to be honest no not really I mean here if you compare Swedish krona to pounds, it definitely seems expensive, especially if you don't know what the um, exchange rate is. Mm. But, I mean, about 1,950 krona, something like that, will probably be something like maybe, oh, I don't even know. But it definitely won't be as much compared to the number of pounds. I mean, I don't know what exactly to um, make of it. Maybe it will be like... Uh, I don't even want to guess in case I'm horribly wrong, but maybe about a hundred pounds compared, something like that. But that's just per night. So, I mean, if you're spending a couple hundred quid there per night, I mean, there are um, cheaper places nearby like the Radisson Blue, but they're definitely not as unique. No. Well, you're paying for the experience, aren't you? Yeah. But I mean, and mm. mind you, I mean, the price that I just listed off, like 1,950 krona or whatever I just said, um, that's for the cockpit suite, so obviously it is going to be more expensive, and it's like half the price for like a dormitory or a standard room. Yeah. Mm. Uh, did you get served a, a, a airline of food while you were there as well? Did they come around with trays? Um, no, they don't. I mean, they sat, they don't knock on your door and ask you if you want any food or anything. Although, I mean, now that I think about it, that would actually probably make the place more like you're flying on a 747 if you know what i mean sorry for the bad ways of my um me wording things that's just uh, an issue that i have and sometimes things come out a bit funny <laughs> but no i mean now that i think about it since um i do know the name of uh i think it's the manager there who's named amir who gave me access to some of the rooms to tour for my video if i somehow got in contact with him and gave him that recommendation i'll definitely be sure to tell him that, that was your idea and he might find it funny and he might even uh, fall through with that. Yeah, I'm only on a 10% commission as well, so it's not too expensive for him. <laughs> All right. I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm definitely not going to try and contact him but about your wee idea. But, I mean, to be honest, that, that would be pretty good. No, because I'm not... Go on. I was just going to say, not just a hat rack. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, uh, so let's talk a little bit about your channel um, and try and get sort of it uh, you noticed a little bit more. Um, so tell us a little bit about how your channel started as we play sort of one of your uh, videos in the background here. Um, how did it come about? Well, um, it's a quite a, a long story, but um, I've had have I've had previous channels which, um, if I'm being honest, I would probably upload the dumbest content in the world i mean back in um the 
like 2017, 2018 and stuff like that, when skits and stuff like that were popular, I was doing stupid stuff like that on previous channels that I've had. And honestly, I had nothing better to do with my time. So I was very childish and thought that it was a good idea to do. After um, a few channels of doing that sort of thing, I did make my current one, which was made on um, March 18th, 2019. And I was uh, posting um, a few different things, which are now deleted on my channel. But um, I think it was mainly stuff like vlog, st vlog, vlog style kind of stuff. I honestly can't fully remember much of what I was posting, but I know that I deleted uh, pretty much all of it. And um, I was eventually led to start making travel content starting from um, July. No, so, sorry, not July, uh, January 2020. So a month after uh, COVID became a thing. And... I started making uh, aviation related content at first and then I started making um, content on other modes of transportation. I had a video on Edinburgh trams and one with uh, the train company LNER, which was my most popular video at the time, but I deleted it, deleted it at approximately 9,400 views because I wanted to focus all my attention on aviation related content because it's my passion. And well, because aviation was my passion since uh, the first half of 2017, that's a different topic we'll get into later on in the podcast. Um, I thought, as it's an interest of mine, and I'm not really doing much to associate with it other than just watch the planes, why not um, document it? So make uh, aviation related vlogs, but it was mainly plane spotting at the start. And at the start, if you've seen my first plane spotting video, unlike the one that's on the screen right now, the first plane spotting video that I did on my channel is very bad but i mean i think everyone's first few videos are always pretty bad but you do improve so i'm not too disappointed in myself but i start i made that video back in, uh, when i was uh, 14 years old uh, less than a month before turning 15 so i mean i've been doing uh, this sort of content for the last few years now and yeah, after a while, I did improve, but if you've seen my first video, you'll know that when I use the text, I only give, like, a brief explanation to what the aircraft is, like the airline and the parts of the aircraft type that I know. I mean, here, with the Ryanair's landing at Edinburgh Airport, runway 24, you'll see that I put Ryanair 737-800 landing, and with the Qatar Airways A350 clip from Doha, um, I just put Qatar Airways Airbus A350 landing, instead of A350-900, so, and it wasn't until the second plane spotting video that I started taking information from, at the time I was using Plane Finder and I added more information like the flight number and where it was coming from and stuff like that. And then I started adding um, like the delivery dates and stuff like that. So, um, and then um, during um, the first lockdown, we were getting some rather rare and unusual movements at Edinburgh airports, like uh, the Air China 747 registered as Bravo-2445 and an Air China 777, well, two of those actually, but I saw the second one. Uh, I think the registration to that is Bravo-2039 or 3039, something like that. Um, so when I recorded those videos, the videos did pretty well, especially the uh, Air China 747 video. I was disappointed that I missed the landing of that, but at least I got the takeoff. And um, someone actually uh, used that video without my permission, actually, but I think they deleted the video now. Uh, I wasn't too happy with it. And um, yeah, I sh as you would have guessed, I would have improved my content a lot more when I discovered that someone had been using my content, but I only discovered that probably around about the end of 2020 and start of 2021. So around about nine months after that video was basically stolen from me. And um, from the start of 2021, I started adding a watermark of uh, my channel logo, which I still do today. In fact, I, re in fact, I recently uh, changed it to a picture of me filming my video of the Cargo Lux cutaway livery at Prestwick Airport on the 27th of December, 2021. And so, which means a watermark change and all that. But I mean, from 2021, I think my videos were improving. Well, definitely from uh, the second half of 2020. I mean, especially when I filmed my videos of, um, I think the video that I did improve my channel on 
overall was that the video after my video of the Air China 747, which was the video uploaded exactly a week later, I'm pretty sure. It was uh, my first time going to Glasgow Prestwick Airport where I recorded my video of the Cargo Lux Boeing 747-8 freighter registered Lima X-ray <coughs> dash uh, uh, Victor Charlie Hotel. And um, yeah, um, so that's when I started going to Prestwick more and um, not including the aircraft info and stuff like that that I did in my plane spotting videos when I film just one aircraft at a certain airport. So I did that and uh, it pretty much has been the same ever since. And I mean, yeah, and then a few weeks later, that's when I saw the Antonov 225 at Prestwick on uh, August 2nd, 2020. And the crowds were very big. And uh, in fact, well, I mean, I have talked about that on uh, your episode of the Antonov 225 when I, at very short notice, came on and told my story of how I went to see it. So, I mean, anyone who's interested in that, go check out uh, that video. Uh, it'll also get Tom more views, which I think he'll very much appreciate. And um, yeah, from 2021, I started making some more um, aircraft model and unboxing and reviews. But I mean, I made two of those back in 2020, but I made more in 2021 because I started buying more. But of course, they are expensive things, especially from companies like uh, Gemini Jets and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Uh, I don't really know what much else to say about that. I mean, that's pretty much how my channel started. And over time, I have been improving and have been seeing a lot of rare movements like the Antonov 225, the US Air Force A-10s, which you see on my video, which is Tom's displaying on the screen now. Very rare movement for uh, Prestwick and probably for Scotland overall. In fact, uh, two people who I know have actually said that's probably the movement of the decade, even though I would have thought that the Antonov 225 would have been. And, um, but yeah, I mean, during this uh, two day filming session at Presswick, I definitely got a lot of videos. I mean, this video was the reason why I went to go see it because of the A 10s. But I also got uh, two um, military A 330s, one from the UAE Air Force and the other one from the RAF. And of course, there was the uh, Antonov 12, which, um, I mean, I think there's one at Presswick Airport. Uh, as we speak and uh i mean it's a bit of a rare movement for presswick and i'm glad that i got a video of that during this two-day filming session in fact between i mean the night between these two days i actually didn't get any sleep because you know i was too busy editing these videos and by the time that i was pretty much done and i realized what time it was i'm like you know what i'm gonna get an earlier train than i planned and just head down to prestwick from edinburgh just so that way i'm there and because i've got nothing better to do but yeah i'm glad to oh, sorry I'm glad that I get to see a lot of these rare movements, both at Edinburgh and Prestwick Airport mainly, but I do hope to get to Glasgow Airport more. I'm definitely going to be filming a lot of videos uh, from Manchester Airport in a few days. Um, I'm going for the uh, Atlas Air 747 and Emirates, not Emirates A380, the uh, Singapore A380. So those are at least two more videos to make. And of course, I've got an upcoming Heathrow trip a week today. And... Yeah, I'm really, like I already said, I'm very glad and I'm very privileged to get to see all these movements. And I'm glad that I am, uh, I've got to go in the direction that I have with my channel. But, um, and normally I'm not really the kind of person who asks for subscriptions or anything like that. But now that I know that you can get a community page at 500 subscribers, I'm kind of wanting to gain, well, 104 more and gain uh, that community page since I do think community community pages are awesome. Yeah, lovely. When you come to Heathrow, Sam, is there anything in particular you're really looking forward to seeing? Um, not really. I'm just excited to see the uh, majority <laughs> of uh, heavy aircraft like A380s, A350s, 777s and uh, stuff like that. <clears throat> yeah, no, it'd be decent. It's always good down there. Have you, never, have you been before? Uh, yeah, I went down in uh, April. In fact, that was my second trip series I filmed in April, which um, is all on my channel. And yeah, I'm glad that I got those done and out of the way because, I mean, during the uh, process of filming uh, the videos that I have filmed after 
the two trip series and during the editing process of the trip series i mean it took quite a long time but honestly i mean it can affect your mental health and make you unhappy and it makes you want to have these mental breakdowns because at one point i felt like i was going to do that because i felt like i wasn't spending enough time with people like my mum and my friends and other family members that's one of the downsides of youtube honestly and i mean well i mean your mental health can be affected you can be in a involved in a lot of a uh, crappy drama which i was involved in back in may and yeah honestly it's one of the uh well two of the downsides of uh being a youtuber but honestly being a youtuber is a great hobby i think it's like anything sam i think you have to have um, a, a balance haven't you yeah you've always got to have downsides i mean if anything i think you know, just ignore me. I mean, I probably shouldn't even say what I was going to say next. Not because it was bad, but because it doesn't make any sense now that I think about it. But yeah, don't, yeah, just just leave it. Don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. I, I understand what you're saying, though. Tom, uh, cut that out. Must have been really cool to see these uh, A10s, uh, especially sort of oh, the, the massive amount of and, them. Uh, I mean, getting to talk to a few people, but I mean. One of the people who I started talking to on the day of the departures, which you see in this video, who, I mean, I've been watching for a while. I'm not going to name him, but he does have a couple thousand subscribers. But he was honestly not what I expected. I was trying to be nice, introduce myself and try and have a conversation with him. But he sounded like he just didn't want me there and gave me such a down attitude. But I mean, when after I left and his friend arrived, I think they were talking about me, which I mean, I could sense and I could hear a little bit, but I can't really remember what was said. That's just what you get with people these days. And it's the thing that I hate the most about this hobby. You think you can trust people, but you can't. But it's uh, one of the reasons why, I mean, I do prefer sometimes doing this hobby by myself, making uh, content on social media. But I mean, I have a few friends who I can actually trust and rely on, and that makes me feel better. And I don't think, uh, well, one of them that I'm really good friends with, I don't think talks to that many people in the industry that much other than me and maybe some people that I'm not aware of. But I mean, it's good to have those kinds of people in the aviation industry. Mm. Yeah, there's there's too much of it goes on. It really, really. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I mean, I've only got a few hobbies myself, but I have never ever known going up like sl slightly off subjects. I have never known a hobby what produces such negativity than what what aviation yeah. does. Social media, you get is bad. the place where you get more of it. I mean, especially since you know messaging and phone calls and public posts and stuff like that and yeah. um yeah yeah I, I think you just rise above it haven't you and just I mean, I mean it's hard to do but i mean I, i've learned to take things like that with a pinch of salt and and you know if, if these people want to be like that um then they're not worth knowing sam no. you know it's you're better than that thanks <laughs> but i mean yeah Definitely. i mean at least i mean even though you have a lot of toxic people um you do um, have those nice people, and more importantly, you actually get to do what you want in the hobby Absolutely. and actually record the videos that you want to record. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not too worried about what other people have to no, say about no. me. I mean, if people don't like my content or they just genuinely don't like me for whatever mm -hmm. reason, Tom, please cut that out or I'm going to dislike you. But um, <laughs> I saw that. Even though I mean, your like videos speak for themselves, don't they? Your videos are quality. I mean, those are tens that I could have sat and watched them all day, to be quite honest. I mean, you genuinely could after they landed because they were parked up there overnight. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic, fantastic things to see. Um, yeah, just yeah, going back, bro, you, you are. To... I was going to say, you are Sorry, right. Steve, go on. Well, no, I was just saying, you are <laughs> right. There's a, a degree of, of mick take from uh, plain spotting, if you like, but that's sort of uh, why I started separate media because if you put it on your personal page, it ripped you a, a new one for it, which is a shame. It shouldn't be that way, but it. It certainly is, but there's a sort of a community within I mean, I do have my own me. personal page, which I recently created, and I've got a new Twitter and a, a new a new gaming channel, which I'm going to, well, try upload some gaming content to if I can get, um, well, if Amazon actually orders the microphone that my brother ordered me. What sort <laughs> of things are you going to be streaming on your gaming uh, channel? Um, I don't know about streaming, because it is quite powerful, and mind you, the laptop i do use is the 2012 macbook pro so it well decade old now but i mean it still works and stuff like that and i can still edit it edit on it but editing the trip reports were very difficult but the um software that i'm using to screen record works and stuff like that even if i'm only recording like 
1080p 30 frames per second. I mean, I don't care if it's only 30 frames per second. I don't care if it's 50 frames, 60 frames, 120 frames. I honestly don't care. No. Just like like Ken says, the, um, it, it, it's the same in every hobby. Social media, it's made it worse. We just enjoy your hobby. And like you just said then, Sam, you don't mind if it's 30 frames, 50 frames or whatever, or what it looks like or anything like that. If you're enjoying yourself while you're doing it, and the people who... The people who genuinely do care about what you're doing, your friends and, and like us three as well, for instance, um, you know, they get to watch it and they'll comment on things like that. And, and and you're not going to get negative comments, are you? But the ones that you do get, you can just get rid of them, can't you? True. Yeah. But I mean, the yeah. only downside of doing that is that if they see that you've removed them or deleted a message or something, they know they've got to you. But I mean, I do have ways of just ignoring them. I mean, to be honest, you know, I don't even care if people leave negative comments on my videos anymore i stopped responding and even liking them for a bit of time because the drama that i had with a few people uh around the uk uh not just scotland i mean put me off just talking to new people and just responding to comments unless um, i feel like it's actually worth responding to um i mean yeah i mean whether or not i should start liking them again i don't know but i mean if if I do that, then of course people will know that I do some, I often check comments and stuff like that. But I mean, I do look at them, but even if the comment just says great video, I'm just not even going to respond to it anymore, to be honest. Not because I'm, I don't want to or anything, but I mean, I mean, there's not really much point. I mean, even though there's no harm in giving it a like so that they know that you like the comments. I mean, not everyone does that. I mean, even people around uh, the size of my channel, they probably don't always do that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, of course I will look at comments, if I don't feel like responding, I'm just not going to, because I mean, that's another thing and something that I want to pass on to all the people watching. Don't feel obligated to respond to people if you don't want to, or if you're busy or whatever. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've done that to someone. And honestly, I mean, I know I shouldn't have done that, but you know, we learn from these mistakes. Of course, you'll always get your haters, won't you? Mm. A lot of it's just jealousy, Sam. Yeah. But, I mean, You're the person I talk to is quite bigger than me in popularity. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, even though, I mean, I only started questioning him because, you know, he basically left me hanging. That's the only downside. But, I mean, if someone messages me asking me a certain question or something about uh, my hobby or plane spotting or something like that, I suppose I can give it a bit of a response instead of, you know, just looking at the message. And because, uh, you know, you, you can see that someone has seen the message because it will see say either seen or on Twitter the tick that says it's been sent will turn blue so mm. i mean i suppose there's no harm in a little response but i mean yeah it's rude to kind of just leave people hanging i guess but i mean sometimes i mean if you well if you don't want to talk to people even if they're being nice to you you don't have to especially if you don't know them but just do what you want on social media respond Absolutely. don't respond post don't mm. post post yeah. every now and then or mm. inconsistently yeah whatever i mean as long as you're happy doing it then don't worry about yeah. other people i think that's just the way the world that's just the way we all are at the moment isn't it it's just the way i mean i'm 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 an older generation than you and i don't rely on social media or anything like that and i don't really care too much for it to be honest i use it because it's just a way of communicating and stuff like that but a lot of uh, younger people just just live on it mm -hmm. don't they? yeah yeah sign of the times mate <laughs> <laughs> mm. awesome. Anyway, right, let's, we digress. Uh, let's uh, jump into some questions from the comments. Uh, not so much a question, but Jack Rolls says, Sam, I hope you really get a chance to make it to Bournemouth Airport. Something on your list, potentially? Uh, actually, no, but I mean, I know that 747s go in and out of there, but I mean, I mean, if there's like a regular schedule and if I'm ever down to get it, ever able to get down to Bournemouth Airport, I suppose I can. I mean, here. I think Bournemouth, I mean, whether or not it's nice, I don't know, because I, I can't judge or anything, but it looks to have a nice beach. And uh, even though the airport is quite small, I mean, I like how you can get 747s there. I mean, whether or not they go on a regular basis, I don't know, but I've seen a few YouTube videos at Bournemouth Airport. You know what else goes there as well, uh, as well as 747s? Forgot about those, but yeah. A340s. <laughs> I mean, if I'm being one, honest, one if I don't it. like the A340 or 747, if I'm at an airport, if I'm at an airport and, uh, you know, it's the movement of the day or a rare movement at a certain airport, I'll happily film it because if it's rare, then you want to catch it. But I mean, even some aircraft that I film on my channel, I'm not big a big fan of. I just film it because, you know, I'm filming a plane spotting video 
or if I'm filming a, a video of a, a rare movement and an A340 or a 757 happens to be that movement. I mean, I've got a 757 featured in the video that went up uh, about 13 or so minutes ago, actually. Awesome. Yeah, well. It's worth yeah, a look. Awesome. I wouldn't make a special trip, but if you're down here for a, a holiday, it's worth half a day to come and visit it. Yeah, true. Wicked. All right, next question we've got from uh, MaxJet TV Live, who asks, are you going to react this year? Sadly, no, because um, uh, there's two reasons for that. One, I mean, even though I'm down in England anyway, I mean, I'm going to be in Yorkshire, so it's still going to be a bit of a distance. And two, when I first found out about um, Riot, or uh, no, yeah, Riot this year, it was like two, three months in advance, so not enough time to save up for hotel stays and stuff like that but i'm gonna try and go to it next year because riot seems like an awesome thing and i mean when i see the videos of it from people like uh, bradley penny aviation and any other people uh, my age or adults that go there just anyone and from the photos i'm probably gonna get a bit jealous but i mean here it it hopefully it's understandable as to why i can't go i mean right now i can't afford it and i'm supposed to be with family anyway Mm. Yeah, that's fair enough. You can just watch the videos that me and Steve produce instead. Yeah, uh, <laughs> absolutely. Well, I'll be I'll be in the I field drunk. I mean, if you go there and you make videos over the three days that riots happen, I'll, I'll definitely watch them. I'm there for departure day. I'm getting the best of the bunch. Mm, I like that, should be, uh, Tom. Should be good. Uh, <laughs> um, right. So uh, let's have a look at David Hutchins. Just very quickly, is saying great T-shirt, Tom. I know it's Steve's face. Which you can get in the shop, uh, which is in the yeah. description below. Um, one thing you've recently been doing, um, Sam, is of course um, trip reports, um, and we've got one here in the background from Edinburgh to Stockholm on Norwegian seven three seven. Talk to us a little bit about this, and uh, is it something that you sort of want to introduce a little bit more to your channel? Um, well, yeah, I mean, on the screen right now is actually my first trip report on an aircraft. Not my first trip report full stop, because like I said, I had that one on the real company LNER before I deleted it because I wanted to focus entirely on aviation related content. And um, it's been something that I've wanted to do for the last few years. And I mean, yeah, as you just saw in the video, I did add that uh, we map effects, which is something you can get on iMovie on Mac OS. And um, I thought that that's one of the things that would make the trip report cool. And, you know, if you've got that kind of feature on even just basic editing software, it's definitely worth um, using it like I did for, um, well, at least for, uh, I think, the first two videos. I mean, in fact, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I forgot to use it in uh, my two recent ones. But I mean, I'm not too bothered about it, to be honest. But I mean, yeah, like I said, trip reports are something I've wanted to do for a while. And it's one of the the things that I decided to do while on this trip. I mean, so that way I took the, the two trips that I did to London Heathrow and this one to uh, Stockholm, Orlando Airport to stay at the Jumbo Stay to make videos of not only the Jumbo Stay, but also to make trip reports. And yeah, I mean, even though they're not the best trip reports, I'm still very proud of them. And a lot of people seem to like them as they've been getting a lot of views recently, even though, I mean, lots of people get more views. I mean, for my channel following and for the amount of views that I've got, I'm very proud of the success that the videos received. And I mean, it was fun making them despite being, um, you know, taking time to script and uh, voice record and edit and stuff like that. But hard work pays off in the end. Okay, very good. Even if you have to wait like a few years before you can actually make them, because of course, you know, the pandemic hit, lockdown happened, so you you had to wait a lot longer. Oh, lovely. Yeah, no, very good. Um, yeah, I imagine this was obviously quite, uh, you know, what's it like to film a, a trip report sort of thing? How much work goes into it? Um, well, it depends what kinds of trip reports you make. I mean, if you do what Simply Aviation or Sahar Farouk does, then, um, I mean, when you're just adding text from clips then it's much easier and of course you don't have to worry about butchering words uh if you don't know how to pronounce them but i mean 
and of course when you just you know you have the um when you have voiceovers and the background music obviously i mean i suppose it sort of takes away from the experience but i mean like i said i don't care what people think about my videos um i make them the way i want to and i make them full stop because i enjoy making them so i mean yeah but of course i mean there's downsides to making um trip reports with uh, text because of course the text can draw your eyes away from the main focus whereas with videos like this with music mm -hmm. in the background and um when you have uh you know voiceovers and stuff you can actually look at what's on the screen and not text so i like um this style of uh trip reports like what uh jeb brooks and paul lucas and other content creators who do what i do do Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Um, just going through, uh, where was I at? Lost it here. Um, nope, I've lost it. I thought I saw it, but obviously not. No. How long does the preparation for a video take you, Sam? So you know, you know that you're going to Edinburgh Airport, for instance, you're flying to Stockholm on a 787. So do you have to prepare yourself and sort of script everything and what you're going to do or do you just do it sort of as you're going through the airport you, you'll stop and just think well this is where i can and, and do a bit of a voiceover and things like that i mean well i mean i voice over them after filming like uh, people okay, usually right, do. Yeah. i mean of course i mean some parts i do in real time such as yeah. um parts where i say it's now that time for boarding and stuff like that and the yeah. intro and the outro and stuff like that so i mean of course, it depends on what part of the video, um, you know, you have to, you know, I don't know how to say this, but of course, you know, you have to do research and stuff like that, like what I what? did, not specifically mm -hmm. with this trip report, because I started talking about certain stuff um, as voiceovers. I, I was filming a lot of stuff at the airport, so well, I can include this or I can include this. If this doesn't look good or I just simply don't like it, then mm. I'll use this instead. Stuff like that you do. And then, of course... Um, you know, you have to, um, of course, you have to do research, uh, like um, what I did with, um, I looked at some other Norwegian air reviews to sort of see what I can expect on board. But of course, yeah. I mean, not every airline delivers and other people's experiences can be a bit different, but I can get a rough idea. But I mean, here, little did I know on this trip, I wasn't going to have to wear a face mask, as you can see me wearing one in this shot of this video right now. Little did I know, I mean, recently at the time of recording that uh, i mean this trip report was filmed on uh, the 14th of april and uh, mm. you didn't have to uh, wear a mask on board i don't think and uh, that was pretty much the case with the four flights that i took during the month of uh, april so yeah it definitely made the travel experience a lot better and um i think everyone would have thought the same thing yeah and and, do you, uh, and sort you of, do, do you find it quite difficult to be able to condense it down so what, what would you say your average video is, say, half an hour, 20 minutes? Well, when it comes to trip reports, I mean, they can be between 10 to 15 minutes long. But, I mean, of course, that could all end up changing if I make, like, big trips or anything like that. Or if yeah. there's a lot to talk about and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. even with trip reports that are domestic or international, they can be around about the same length where it can be yeah, yeah. 10, 15 minutes. It could be half an hour. It could be an yeah. hour, especially if you make... a. Uh, full flight videos like the flying frenchman or um, there's another french youtuber but there's also i think uh noel phillips did it at the start of uh his time on youtube as well yeah yeah i, I, I was going to mention that that you find that a lot of these um like vloggers and things like that now they seem to have managed to condense each of the videos down to under half an hour i would imagine now i don't know why they do that maybe that's just because it keeps people wanting more at the end of the half an hour. If you're watching it for an hour, perhaps it drags on a little bit. I don't know, but it would, I mean, so you, you would just sort of condense it down into whatever sort of time it needed. You wouldn't try and condense mm. it into 30 minutes. You would just say it's going to set 45 minutes. It's going to be 45 minutes sort of thing. Yeah. But I mean, I yeah. pretty much, I don't really aim for a certain time no. for my videos or anything. I mean, here, if I've got lots of footage or if I've not got lots of footage, then I'll just go by what I've got. And, you know, if it leads to um, me getting a lot of footage, that's fine by me. I mean, it just means, that, I mean, here, a yeah. lot of people do like longer videos, but some people seem to think that some people make them too long. I mean, here, 
even though you see a lot of these YouTubers who make like full flight videos, you think, okay, well, if it's this time, you know, I'm not going to watch it. But in the end, they yeah. still get a lot of views. And those kinds of videos, I mean, I was watching a the Flying Frenchman's one from London Heathrow to Paris Charles de Gaulle on Air France a few months ago. And uh, I felt like, you know, it's that feeling where you actually feel like you're there. Because, I mean, just walking through the, um, like, I don't know what they're called, the flat escalators. I'm just going to nickname yeah, them until travelator someone things. can give me a proper mm. name for them that you get at airports. Yeah. What was that? Travelator. Travelator. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. If When he includes that kind of thing where you just film even just walking along that, I feel like I'm actually there either with him or by myself. But, I mean, it's just something to relax to and you're not having to worry about too much text or talking or anything like that. I mean... I suppose it's a nice thing to watch. Maybe not all at once, but I mean, here, if you've got nothing better to do and you feel like watching it, then go right ahead. Then that's what I'll do. Yeah, yeah. Can well, I just ask about the safety cards as well? Do you keep them? Um, on the return flight, I actually was given one as some memorabilia because there was like five spare ones on the return flight from Stockholm, Orlando to Edinburgh when I also went into the flight deck and talking to the pilots and the flight attendants. I didn't really think much about that on this flight. And yeah. um, I didn't do that on my uh, EasyJet flight or my British Airways flight as well, yeah. because um, of course you can't just take the safety cards because I mean, they even tell you, do not remove them. But I mean, I've got a collection yeah. of British Airways safety cards that my dad managed yeah. to get off of uh, eBay, uh, which I've uh, featured in a video um, earlier this year, actually. Oh well, yeah, I've seen that, yeah, yeah. May I ask as well, do you know why you was in the toilet and you was given, doing this? I was doing that because I mean, obviously you can't hear um, what was said because obviously we're having the conversation yeah. right now on the podcast. But if you watch the video, I was saying I was doing that because at that part part of the video, um, I was saying that someone who's around six foot tall can actually wow. fit in there. I mean, I was doing I did that with pretty much all four of them. I mean, I didn't include the whole clip of doing that. I mean, I cropped it down a bit to. Um, sort of like another panning shot instead of just stopping it. I mean, it kind of depends on how long the part of uh, the voiceover is, because obviously if it's um, uh, too short, you sort of have to um, like trim down a certain part of the video a bit, which yeah. I had to do it um, with the toilet clips pretty much on uh, all of the um, all four trip reports. Um, right. Hopefully that doesn't sound too weird, I hope. No, I, I just thought... Um... I just thought you'd mark the, your height with a pencil and you were comparing to the last time you was on the plane <laughs> that you'd actually grown a bit. No, <laughs> no your, not going to do that. What's been your uh, most and least favourite airlines to fly on so far where you've been doing these trip reports here? Well, because I've only been travelling on three... Uh, well, I mean, I travelled with Tui um, in... Um, June and July 2019, when I have the channel that I currently have, I just didn't make aviation-related content or anything like that. So, I mean, which is, which kind of sucks because two, two Dreamliner flights from Edinburgh to Orlando Sanford when two was operating to Orlando Sanford International Airport at the time, I mean, it would have been good, I suppose. But now they're operating, they've moved from Sanford Airport to Melbourne International Airport. So, I mean, yeah. It's one of those things where you're like, oh, I really wish I, had, I was doing this at the time because it would have been good for this kind of thing. But honestly, I've during the times that I've been making trip reports and with the three airlines that I've flown with in April, Norwegian Air, EasyJet and British Airways, I was not disappointed. I mean, the only downside to all three of those flights was the EasyJet flight and the, um, the window being so dirty that uh, I couldn't properly see out of it and let alone film the takeoff and landing clips. Even though I did include like a time lapse and the sound of the touchdown and the engines, you know, throttling up, I, it just wasn't worth posting the videos of takeoffs and landings, which is something that I'm going to be doing before releasing the trip report, releasing the takeoff and landing clip. But because mm. I couldn't really do that with the EasyJet flight, it was quite disappointing. But I mean, it's no big deal, really. No, no incidentally, um, Jack was sorry. asking about the. Oh, I was just going to say, Steve, Jack was asking about the um, type of equipment you use. Do you, do you, did you have to go out and sort of buy expensive equipment? Or do, you, do you just use equipment what you already had to do your filming and uh, take your photos? Well, it depends on what type of content, um, in my case, anyway. Uh, in mm. my case, I mean, 
I have films that intros and outros, I mean, both, um, well, with my phone, but also, I mean, I started out with using my uh, camcorder for the intro and outro on, um, I think, uh, yeah, well, definitely my first trip report with Norwegian. On the second one, I think I, um, yeah, I you did I use my phone or my camcorder for the intro? I mean, with trip reports, I'll probably always, I'll certainly always use my phone from now on, especially um, when you're filming clips from inside the airports, because, um, you know, some people are really picky about you filming and they'll come up to you and be mm. like, don't film me or don't film inside this airport. This is an offense to the law. You must stop this right now or you're going to get legal consequences. I didn't really have any of that on my trips, but I mean, on the EasyJet flight during boarding on the A320 back home to Edinburgh, one of the my fellow passengers, he didn't say don't film me, but he actually moved out my way to let me well he wasn't in my way but he moved aside to let me and my mum on first because even though I wasn't filming him I, you, you pro could probably just see the back of his head but I yeah. might have cut that bit out if I remember correctly I, mean, I don't mm. fully remember but um, I um, I respected that and he was all like no please go on first I don't really want to be recorded even though it would have just been the back of his head pretty much and while yeah. I was trying to get the edges of the A320 door but I mean I respected that and I think a lot of people would have gone a lot further than that they've probably been like delete that right now but no he moved aside he was respecting i was filming and um he just moved aside to let me on first and so i wasn't uh, he wasn't in the video because mm. he didn't want to be so yeah i mean i'm yeah. glad that, even i'm gonna say i think was I, moaning oh, to me about it sort of i mean in a way i mean he was he was still respecting what i was doing and was just moving out of the way for i mean mainly his benefit but i yeah. mean it helped me as well so i mean yeah. i'm not complaining too much but that's why you should always film on a phone and not with a camcorder because i think yeah. joel from travelino blog a friend of mine and a friend of bradley penny aviation who was on episode two and um uh he actually filmed the inside the airport with a camcorder and i think if i remember correctly black bradley was telling me about how he was told that he was promoting terrorism i mean I know some people can be strange and like, no, you can get legal consequences for that, but promoting terrorism, I mean, how does that make any sense? It doesn't. Yeah, people so. yeah, people will be like that, won't they? Uh, I think that's just that negativity again, isn't it? But I think that people mm. as well, or I think they're a little bit more tolerant towards uh, people recording, particularly with mobile phones, because it's not just aviation, it's, it's, it's when you go... It's when you go in town to buy yourself a new pair of jeans or something like that. You can guarantee you'll see somebody recording something with a mobile phone somewhere. And nowadays, rather than rather than shy away from it, you just walk right through camera shot, don't you? People just it, it's becoming normal, if you know what I mean. Mm. Yeah. I mean, lots of YouTubers do it and they don't always experience this. Some people do, but I mean, if um the airport workers and airlines sort of knew that this is the kind of thing that some aviation enthusiasts do, because I mean some of them might even think you know, they're just using this for transportation or, or something like that. But, I mean, especially, like, senior citizens who have never even heard of social media before or have heard of it, but they just don't really know what it is and they don't know what yeah. people do with it. I mean, some people can be like that, and if they see you filming, they'll be a bit picky and confused, so they'll actually go up to you and prevent you from doing it, especially if yeah. they don't understand you or if they know what social media is. And mm. I mean, of course, some people will be all like, don't film people because that's people's main concern these days who are like that. So, I mean, I don't film people on purpose other than me and anyone who asks to be in my video or if I'm hanging out with someone, if I'm making a vlog or something like that, then um, I mean, of course, I mean, I don't really know what to say after that, but I mean, other than no. I'm not going to film. No, I, I, I think what you have to do, I think what you have to do is just, um, it, it's just carry on what you're doing. And then if you do get pulled about it, then you've just got to respect other people's opinions. And if they don't want to be on camera, or if you get told not to do it, then you've just got to respect that boundary, haven't you? And not do it. Yeah. I think that's the thing to do, isn't it? Mm. So, so, okay. sorry, so, sorry, Tom. You only want no, to I was say. just going to say what we'll do um, is we'll sort of, we'll, we'll leave it there for the time being in terms of uh, the, interview obviously plenty to talk about but say we've got a um time constraint this evening uh get done by nine o'clock so yeah. we'll um yeah so we'll 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 pick this up sort of another time um but um obviously thank you to sam for joining this evening uh, we're not done yet obviously we've got quite a quite a bit of time left to go uh but before we do uh let's see what should we do first should we do the guest for next week or should we do the segment first 
I mean, to be honest, it was mainly just those things I wanted to talk about. Sort of just, um, you know, I mean, talk about the two recent trips which we've done and uh, how it went for me and what I had to do to do it. But um, and also the start of my channel, which I mean, whether or not it was a bit confusing, I don't know. But I mean, I mean, stuff like that. I mean, I do like talking about talking about when I'm doing interviews and stuff like that. But um, I think, um, Ian, when you were asking me sort of um, about uh, equipment and stuff like that, because I mean, I started talking about something else after a bit of time, because it was mainly just trip reports and then filming other people yeah. was the topic. But yeah, when it comes to filming trip reports, I'll use my phone, plane spot, and of course, I'm going to use my camcorder, which uh, for those interested is the uh, Panasonic HC V180 camcorder, which uh, my brother got for me for my 14th birthday before I actually made the channel that I currently have. So that i use i mean it's not the best but it gets the job done and it's good enough for me i mean it records at 50 frames per second but the software i use on my laptop iMovie pretty much reduces it to 30 frames but i mean i don't care because i mean people watch things in 30 frames per second and i'm not picky like that but i mean of course if the frames are too low like you know one frame per second or something like that obviously it's so bad so 30 frames per second 20 frames per second 25 frames per second or above i'm happy with yeah, judging by your video on that with with those air tens there, Sam, whatever that were whatever that were being shown, it was fine. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, Tom. Anyway. No, that's all right. No problem. No worries at all. I think while we still got people here, uh, let's do the uh, huge announcement of who we've got next week um, that people were trying to guess. And I know Steve and Ian both know. Sam's been trying to guess all week long. A couple of people have been trying to guess all week long as well. Um, so, yeah, should we do it? Get it, we get it, it done, Tom. Get it done. Get yeah, it let's done. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, come, yeah. On. <clears throat> come on. I think we've been waiting long enough. Been waiting long enough. Absolutely. <laughs> right, here we go. Uh, here is who's with us next week. Uh, you might recognize him. Hi, it's Jeremy Spake here. And I'll be joining Tom and his team in the Departure Lounge podcast next Sunday. Be sure to tune in to find out all about my aviation background. Yeah, see, no one would have guessed that, would they? <laughs> who is that? Uh, who is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, who is that? Oh, come on now. Yeah, who is, I've never heard of him before. Come on, you. Right. Well, Jeremy Spake. For those I'm not who playing around. Know, I actually haven't heard of him. For those who do know who Jeremy Spake is, uh, as uh, the Galaxy of Pleasure has decided to put Mr. Aeroflot himself uh, from the hit series back uh, in the late 90s called Airport, and of course, more recently on BBC doing um, the Airport Return to the Skies. Jeremy Spake uh, is with us next week. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, have been looking forward to that for a very long time. Been waiting uh, to um, to announce that uh, for a very long time. But yes, there you, you know, go. I'm in, in the making that one, hasn't it? Hey, no, can it's I been just a long time in the here, making? I mean, even though I mean, this is supposed to be Ian's job. I see a comment saying he looks like Jeb Brooks. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, Jeremy, <laughs> that comment is... just got deleted. Jeremy Spake is with us uh, next week, so yeah. hopefully you lot can join us uh, for that one. However, we're still not done tonight because we are doing uh, a brand new segment, um, which we're going to introduce to you right now. Things that look like Condor. Yes, indeed. Seriously, uh, Tom, you couldn't have picked anything else. I mean, honestly. Oh, my God. Couldn't have God. picked anything else, but I chose to go with this because I think it's a right good laugh. So, uh, <laughs> if it was Christmas, it'd be easier, but no. You have to pick the worst no, time to do me, it. There's plenty of things, plenty of things. So, brand new segment uh, of things that look like Condor. This is where you guys at home get involved as well. If you're out and about uh, on your travels and you see anything that resembles the Condor livery, um, we want you to send it to us so we can feature it on the show every week. Um, so uh, I've got a stripy sock. Where do I send it to? <laughs> you can keep that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's begin uh, with things that look like Condor. First of all, bananas in pajamas. 
<laughs> now, surely you've heard of them, Sam. I have, but I mean, honestly, I mean, I mean, here the striped pajamas, fair enough. The whole thing, no. We're more looking at the pajamas and the stripes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so representing the blue uh, is, of course, um, banana. Uh, I said bananas then. Bananas in pajamas. Next one. Where's Wally? <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah. Come up with the worst characters ever, don't you, Tom? <laughs> Following Let on from the that. worst segment ever. Mm. <laughs> Following on from that, sent in by Marco Barrett after our trip yes, uh, last week, and he was in Dawlish. The Harrison's Amusements Arcade in Dawlish. Yeah, that's class. That. that that's the kind of thing you want, Tom. Yeah. That's what we want. If you've got anything that looks like this, like in a stripe. Yeah. Uh, that represents or what you think looks like Condor, can be literally anything that's stripey. If you've got anything like that, send it to us. We'll feature it on the show in this weekly brand new segment. And then lastly, representing the green, uh, kiss me, I'm Irish hat. By <laughs> <laughs> the Lord Jesus. Oh, I'm not even worried about the show. I'm worried about the name of that. So, yes. So if you've got anything and you're out and about on your travels and you uh, want to send it to us so we can feature it on this segment, do so. But for now, that was the debut of... Things That Look Like Condor Yes, indeed. I'll take that off the screen now. There we go. So uh, let's start to wrap tonight up. So let's do um, some shout outs. Of course, this is where we shout out people um, nearest and dearest, loved ones, family members, etc. Uh, and uh, yeah, pretty much anyone you like. Uh, Sam, we'll go with you first. Well, um, shout out and uh, thank you to um, you three for uh, having me on for however many times I've been on now. Five, however many uh, I mean, separate. I'll do you separately. I mean, Tom for being what, arguably the uh, the best host of the best podcast, and um, Steve and Ian for um, being the best co-hosts. And um, thanks to the uh, audience for uh, tuning in. Shout out to all of them, and uh, shout out to uh, all the people who have contributed to uh, my channel, such as uh, my. Uh, my mum and dad, especially my dad, since he drove me to a lot of the places near the start of my uh, aviation YouTube hobby. But, um, I mean, and also, I mean, here, for taking me to a Stockholm Orlando airport to stay at the Jumbo Stay. I mean, he paid for all of that as part of a Christmas and birthday present for me. So shout out to him for uh, um, doing that for me so I can make those uh, videos. And anyone else who contributes to my channel, whether they are, uh, a family member or friend who uh, takes me somewhere or uh, someone who I'm friends with or someone I hang out with while plane spotting, like a fellow YouTuber or a photographer or someone who just goes there pretty much for, just for the sake of watching a plane instead of uh, filming it and uh, taking pictures of it. Wicked. Uh, right, let's go with Ian. Um, yeah, so I was just reading a comment then. Um, just, yeah, thanks to everyone who's been watching tonight. Thanks to you, Tom, and thanks to you, Steve, for being uh, amazing, like, friends and hosts and things like that. And a massive shout-out to you, Sam, for being our guest tonight. And um, it's, it's been really, really interesting learning about, you know, what you've been getting up to and things like that. I mean, we talked to you in, in moderators' chat and things like that. But it's nice to have a proper full mm. conversation about what you're actually uh, – up to and, and also to let other people know about your channel as well so they can uh, subscribe to you um uh, yeah so thanks to uh yeah just thanks to everyone just because just thanks i'm just a jolly person who's saying thanks to everyone <laughs> well, thanks to everyone good stuff good stuff <laughs> uh right steve over to you uh yeah lovely um tom ian as always 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 a, a pleasure so uh so thank you again um and thank you mate that was uh Fascinating, so I appreciate you coming on. Edmunds are watching at home, so special little shout out to my brother, uh, the cat, brought me back in the uh, A350 um, safety card. So, uh, thank you very much. That is me over and out. 
Wonderful. I'll give a couple of shout outs very quickly. Uh, one to Sam for joining us this evening. It's been rather riveting, of course. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Ian, a big shout out to you uh, for joining us this evening as well. Uh, Steve, of course, for doing a great job with the co-hosting. Uh, Gail and Jack, of course, in the chat, doing a wonderful job with the moderating. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, uh, yeah, everybody watching. Um, at home as well that's uh, contributed to the chat this evening um, very well done to you guys very yeah very big well done to you guys as well so uh, if you missed it uh, Jeremy Spake is with us next week um, one to look forward to I'm sure um, and uh, yeah uh, we will see you next Sunday at 7.30pm uh, for that show episode 69 don't get any ideas right <clears throat> So uh, let's say our goodbyes. Um, we'll start with Sam first. Right. Well, um, first of all, goodbye to um, you three gents for um, what am I saying? Four, four. I'm not shouting you out or anything. But <laughs> wow, as you can tell, I'm not always prepared. But um, yeah. Um, well, um, goodbye to uh, you guys and um, for everyone who's watching this, uh, goodbye uh, ladies, gents, boys and girls and those who don't identify as either of those. Enjoy what's left of uh, your week and um, yeah, your Sunday night. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I can see Ian finds that funny, uh, mm. even though... I'm, I'm watching you struggling, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. But um, yeah, so goodbye to everyone watching this i mean if anything that's probably the quickest way of summing it up and i don't see why other people don't do that themselves so you need to do awesome wonderful Tip stuff oh he was, he was talking then sorry my bad garris carry right, on. Fine. i was just gonna say tip for uh, any guests who come on uh, the podcast in the future oh we love it right okay okay well, lovely yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see you soon i'm sure we'll see you soon <clears throat> right, uh, let's go, Ian. Yeah, just thanks to everyone who's been watching tonight and all the uh, comments. Um, and, and sorry if we've not read all the questions out to Sam. Um, but yeah, good, good night to Sam as well. And, and goodbye to everyone who's been watching. And see you all next week when Jeremy's on. Mm, looking forward to that. See yeah. you next week. All right, Steve, in the most Steve way possible, if you'd like to uh, say your goodbyes. Um, and just very quickly in the shout out, it was a little bit of miss of me. Thank you, um, Gail and Jack. And I, I, I forgot to mention it. We do appreciate you being in the background and helping us out. Yeah, appreciate it. All right. Um, all right. Please stay safe, stay sexy. And until next time, take care of yourself. All right. Have a good week. Cheer on. <laughs> awesome. All right, all that's left for me to say uh, is uh, enjoy uh, your week. Um, hopefully it's not too stressful for you. Uh, prepare yourself, prepare any questions for Jeremy Spake um, and get them to us on Sunday night next week, 7.30 p.m. for episode 69. So uh, for now, take care, have a fantastic week, uh, and we'll see you next week. Uh, let me just prepare myself for this. There we go. Bye-bye. <laughs>